All right, what's up YouTube? So today's video is gonna be a little bit different, kind of a bonus video since I'm gonna upload tomorrow, which would be Saturday and Sunday. So this is just for the people that are interested in the KX125 right here. I'm gonna go over everything, kind of a review as the title is probably KX125 review or 2018, whatever review. So this is basically for somebody if you wanted to build one, if you're just interested in the in the build overall. Some of the parts I have on here, kind of my review on them, uh, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna move the bikes around, put it on the stand right here so we can get um, a little bit better lighting. We'll go through everything. I got a full list on my uh, review on this thing so far. I'll probably have a talk about it throughout multiple other videos. So if you guys are new, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Click that little bell next to the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll uh, we'll get right into it. This isn't a normal video. If you're not interested, just close out, come back tomorrow and I'll have another video up for you guys. Okay, so as you can see, I got a full long list filling up the paper of stuff I gotta talk about on this thing. I guess we'll jump right into it. The first thing being, this thing only probably has about, I say five hours on it. I've been like keeping track of my iPhone as far as like riding time and whatnot since I didn't put an hour meter on there. So it's got roughly five, maybe six hours on the bike. If that, um, haven't had a problem, starts right up. I checked the spark plug the other day. It was running a little bit rich, which is better than lean, but uh, I'll probably just not put as much oil in the gas and she'll be fine. I guess I'll talk about some of the upgraded parts first as far as like the 2010 forks, the 2010 uh, 250F brakes, along with the, uh, the Electron Carb, along with the, uh, the V-Force reeds. So basically I'll start with the suspension. The forks are real, like, I didn't ride with the other, the stock forks. So assuming these are gonna be a little bit better and with the right spring and everything all set up for yourself. And then the brakes are super, super solid. I feel like they're almost better than my, my 250F over here to be quite honest. Um, they're super snappy, really responsive, both front and rear. And uh, yeah, I really can't complain about that. The uh, Electron Carb, that thing, I literally didn't tune it. I didn't do anything. It should already come pretty set up and pretty tuned, but all I had to do was adjust the idle here and there and get it fine tuned as far as that. And other than that, the thing runs perfect. You guys are looking to uh, literally bolt on a carb and not have to worry about jetting or anything like that. Electron is definitely what you need to get for your two stroke. That is a fact. So check them out. I'll leave a link down below in the description. They hooked it up with the carb for the build and uh, I'm really grateful for that because otherwise I probably wouldn't have gotten it and it made a world of a difference in the response for sure along with the, uh, the V-Force reeds on there. I mean, they probably help a good amount on top of the carb. So if you're gonna do the carb, I'd recommend doing the, the reeds along with that. You can get the, I have the V-Force three. You can get the four. I don't know, maybe I'll get the four after. And then another thing, I got the, uh, I think it's the Pipazi or the Outlaw Racing dual bearing aluminum throttle tube. Um, that thing's super snappy. Honestly, I'm getting one for the pit bike, my 250F, and any other bike I ever get again because it's just way more solid. It doesn't move around at all. It doesn't wiggle back and forth. It's not like, like a typical standard uh, nylon or plastic tube. And uh, I hate that slop in the tube. I want it like as tight as possible and it to be the easiest to twist as it can get. So that's pretty much along with the new uh, throttle cable that comes with Electron. So if you do the, the cable, if you do the tube, do the cable with it and uh, you'll pretty much have no issues and it'll be super snappy. And then just the, uh, the arc clutch lever, super smooth, unbreakable. Not much to talk about a, a clutch lever. As far as the conversion kit, I mean, there's not really much to it. It's holding up, nothing, I mean, there's not really anything to it other than the spacers. As long as you put sealant on the spacers right there, and then a sealant on everything else as far as the air boot and the box, it utilizes still the O3 boot. Um, and yeah, other than that, there's not much to it. The only thing that uh, I wish it came with was the, the radiator mounts. I had just had a zip tie in the front and top, and the tops on both sides actually broke off, so maybe with the flex and they just snap. So I'm not too concerned about it. They really, they're on there pretty good. Other than the top, they kind of pull out a little bit. But um, it's really not that big of a deal. Maybe if you were to get a different conversion kit, they'd have those brackets. I know I've seen a few that I can possibly get, but to be honest, it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, zip ties are, you don't even see them. Just talking on the, uh, the conversion kit, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, the tank is actually raised above the frame right here. There's probably a good two inch gap. And I know some people, um, whatever, Carson Browns, when they showed his on, I think it was Motocross Action, or one of the um, websites did the video on it. And uh, they actually, since this is BBR, whatever, they made the, the custom tank and it actually fit on the, on the frame fine. I mean, I, sure, it may look a little bit funny, like the spacer there, and you, it honestly feels almost identical as a 2018 KX250F, in my opinion. Maybe the seat comes back a little bit further than the 250F, but you kind of get used to it once you ride it a little bit. And uh, yeah, overall, I mean, 
I wouldn't complain about how it feels. It rides really good, it turns on a dime. I mean, that's kind of all 125s are really nimble and it's a lot easier to move around and kind of like lean over. It is lighter, so that would kind of probably contribute to uh, to that factor, but everything's super solid on it as far as right now and it being pretty much brand new aside from stuff falling off and stuff getting loose, but that's just my own fault and whatever stuff's gonna happen. And with that, the 125, putting on the stand side by side, it's about maybe two inches lower from the 250F, so it's kind of, like if you're a taller person, you're a little bit more scrunched on the bike, but uh, I guess you can get some taller bars. These are just the, uh, the stock. 18, um, 250F, Renthal, whatever, 7 8 bars. I don't know the specific bend on them, but whatever the stock 250Fs come with, I like the way they feel, and I've had the stock bars on the past two or three 250Fs. So anything compared to the 250F, you sit a little bit further back on the seat, and then you gotta move up a little bit further in the corners, but it's so minuscule that you barely even notice it, and if this was being like your main bike that you ride, you just, get used to it. Now I'll briefly talk about the wheels. I haven't had any issues. There's normal, check the spokes, tighten them up a little bit, make sure it's the even around so they don't warp the wheel and whatnot. Pretty straightforward. Check them every once in a while. Checked them after the first ride and second ride and uh, just went over them all really quick. I'm probably gonna do it in tomorrow's video as I go over the bike and fix the pit bike up. And I mean the sprocket that came on, it probably won't last too long, but I mean, it's a sprocket. Regardless, it's gonna have to get changed at some point. A lot of questions on uh, the motor. I did the whole motor myself, whole top, bottom, end bearings, everything, the whole deal. And uh, when I bought it, it actually came with, it was Eric Gore already um, touched it. He uh, honed the cylinder, so it's a 144, and then he had his piston in there, so I had to contact Eric Gore, get the matching piston. I think it's a Wiseco you can get from Wiseco, I believe. It has Wiseco, their logo on it, so it's obviously from them. And uh, I mean, riding this compared to say Ryan's YZ125, I know a lot of you said like, oh, you should have just bought a YZ125 or this and that. Like, it's also the cool factor. Like nobody, like maybe five people have these and just because I don't, I didn't want a Yamaha, I wanted this and whatever. I'm not even gonna get into that whole controversy on what I should have gotten because that's, that's a whole nother video. But I've never ridden a stock KX125, but uh, comparing the YZ, Obviously it pulls harder, it's response I feel, but that could also be the carb and the, and the reeds, which Ryan's bike doesn't have, but maybe I'll do a YZ versus KX, like side by side, um, like I'll ride that, he'll ride that, we'll compare everything and do a whole video on it. If you guys wanna see a, a YZ125 versus KX, 125, 144, whatever, post a comment down below, I'll give this video a thumbs up, and I'll try to do that here soon, because I'm sure a lot of you would be uh, curious on that, or, any other 125 in general to uh, compare it to. See how long the uh, the motor lasts at the top. I know you have to change rings more often on the 144, I believe, so I have two spare rings. And then I wish I, when I ordered it, he was supposed to send two pistons, he never did. So I wish I had a spare just in case so I have it. I might just uh, contact him again and then get another just for a backup because you never know, it never hurts to have a spare top end since I have that Athena 144 that's still sitting over the bench. If anybody needs a Athena 144 uh, piston and rings in the whole kit, let me know, DM me on Instagram, at Tyler Monaghan, and I'll sell it to you like 20 bucks cheaper because I don't need it. The other questions that I've seen as far as fuel, what I'm running, the first like little bit I ran just 93 pump gas, whatever, and then I mixed it 32 to one. Then over here I bought a five gallon uh, Sunoco 112, just to try it out, just to see if it really makes a difference. It'll smell better, I mean, but I'm probably not gonna end up keep buying that stuff. I'll probably just end up running uh, the normal 93 pump gas because there's no need for me to spend 65 bucks or five gallons just it's a waste so i i did it one time just to see and uh we'll see if it really makes a difference and my 250f there's no point on a stock motor but uh yeah a couple other minor things from uh trick engineering got the uh the steering stop set up because if you upgrade your uh your forks from the stock 2003 or whatever bike model you have if you upgrade it to like a 2010 or newer or any newer fork and triple clamp the, uh, your triple clamps will actually smash into the frame and you're gonna need a custom stop because it won't hit the existing stop. So Trick Engineering hooked it up with a, a stop for the bar, so that's all dialed in. I, I'll walk you through it on yesterday's video or the day before of uh, all in detail on that. So if you wanna check it out, uh, search on the channel. But uh, that's super solid. Here we got the, uh, the Raptor Titanium foot pegs. Those are always uh, super good, really sharp, keeping your boots on the pegs so they don't come off. To my understanding, I mean, it runs pretty good. It's pretty solid, and uh, for doing minimal like adjustments and tuning after I actually built the bike itself, aside from uh, like getting my, the suspension set up and sag and whatnot and everything set up in, in that aspect, which it still isn't completely 100% set up, but uh, it's better than my 250F because that thing all it's got done is just the sag. I haven't touched my 250F in probably like four or five weeks. I just rode it around the lawn today. 
and because I haven't literally started it in forever since I've been working on this thing and riding this. So it's still got that new factor and it's kind of like that, uh, that toy you get on Christmas. You just want to use it, use it, use it until you get bored of it. And then I uh, will move on to the, the next thing. Who knows what that'll be. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up kind of this review, I guess you would say, on the KX125. If you guys have any other questions, definitely let me know down below in the comment section and I'll try to um, respond and get back to some of you guys. Yeah, as far as the conversion kit and where to get it, everything is linked down below in the description and with all the parts listed for the bike, all the information is down below. If you're curious, along with on my Instagram page, at Project KX125, which is the dedicated uh, build page for the 125 along with my personal account at Tyler Monaghan. I'm going to be posting various uh, riding clips and any updates on the project um, account, different tips and parts and stuff I get along the way because I'm still going to be upgrading stuff. Now that the base and kind of platform is built on this 125, I'd like to upgrade um, eventually to uh, some better triple clamps since these are kind of roached. They're kind of all scratched up since they were used along with uh, I got to get new bar clamps. I'd like to get some better forks eventually. As far as the silencer, I might get rid of the shorty and get the regular, I don't know what it's called specifically. It's a little bit longer. It's but if you guys enjoyed it, like I said, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit the share button, share it with your friends. And off of that, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video.